Welcome to the Shutter Saga Podcast. I'm your host, Marvin Blue. Join me each week as we dive into amazing conversations with some of our industry's top leaders. We will talk about photography, business, and most of all, share the stories that have laid the foundation to our journey in this world we call photography. A couple of ways to support the show is to like, subscribe, and share the show with others. Leave those five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and if you're a fan of seeing us live, we are on YouTube. Also, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Again, thanks for tuning in and enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. This is the Shutter Saga Podcast. I'm your host, Marvin Blue. Uh, my guest this week is, you know, a good friend of mine. He is an inspiration to me. He is an instructor, a, a world-class photographer, a world traveler, probably one of the best in the business. I've spoken uh, his name numerous times in numerous conversations. He comes to us today from the nation's capital, Washington, C, Washington D.C. Um, we've got Brandon Hunter, ladies and gentlemen. Brandon, welcome to the show. How are you, bud? Thank you. I'm, I'm doing well, doing well. A little bit busy weekend, so as I talked told you earlier, just coming back from a bridal show, so things are pretty good. Nice. How's the um, how's the wedding industry treating the D.C. area now? Um, it's been pretty good. You know, I've had a couple people ask me a few questions, uh, like, what have I seen it change, right? So we still talk about the COVID. And I said, you know, since COVID, what I've seen in the D.C. area Right after COVID, people trying to jump, get smaller weddings done, taken care of within six months. I was seeing those type of time frames. Now, this is probably my third bridal show in two months. Mostly what I'm seeing is now we're back to kind of like that year ahead of time. You know, we're still getting everything together. People are moving a little bit slower, but it's definitely uh, picking back up. Today was a little bit of a smaller one, but two weeks ago we did one that I've done before. I would say it's about a medium size, and the turnout was actually outstanding. So, awesome, yeah. awesome. That's good to hear. I'm glad things are turning around and kind of stepping back in that right direction. Um, so, uh, yeah. pivoting into it, you know, this show's all about our stories. You know, what got us to the dance and everything. So, in keeping in with that spirit, what was it that got you to pick up the camera? How long have you been you know, a photographer now? So I probably picked up a camera, I would say, right around 2008, Um, you know, and just kind of like everybody else, you know, just you see something like cameras now are a little bit more easier to get, right? You know, as we go, it's just like electronics everywhere. But 2008, I had moved to um, D.C. area in 2007, um, and I had took a bio. I used to work for General Motors paid off all my bills to move to DC and I went on a, um, went to see Obama. Uh, he was campaigning at American university. Right. And, and so I was like, my cousin was like, Hey, let's go up there. Let's check him out. I got tickets. So we went up there. I had that little point to shoot like everybody else. Right. The attached lens and Senator Kennedy was speaking to the crowd. I was probably about 20 yards away and I took a shot of, at the time, I didn't know what composition, was right and but it was a great you know kennedy is speaking to the crowd and you got uh, obama leaning over to the side with that classic smile clapping and i took the shot and remember those little p little back of the cameras it looked awesome i got home put it on the computer it looked like total trash right mm-hmm. the dim gym slow shutter sputter sputter a slow shutter speed so um it was just blurry and i wound up going to um like a house party and there was a guy there um and he had a nice blown up kind of like my picture back here but he had a nice blown up picture at the same event of obama and i asked him i said how did you get that and he talked he started talking to me about dslrs so the first camera i bought was uh was i think it was the d was it a d40 uh or 40d for the can okay and uh, i said i was gonna start taking photos to put stuff on the wall myself and start taking pictures of my cousin playing little league football and you know we all started off on automatic and when it was right i was like wow that looks good so i just started kind of getting a little bit more interested in learning how can i control and manipulate the way i want to and it, that just sparked a journey i got my first probably paid uh wedding in 2013 and uh probably like 500 dollars, a little ymca um, type of joint, you know, people there was just looking for somebody new, they didn't want to spend a lot of money, and it just kind of sparked something in me, 
um, still said I wasn't going to get much into the into the wedding biz. You know, I love to create, just to shoot. I love writing. Um, uh, but it just kind of took off from there. I had a gentleman, I was lucky enough to meet a gentleman who had a studio right behind my home, um, condo in D.C. And he, he knew I was looking for a studio. So he came in and he said, listen, I love your work. I'd love to see you grow. He's like, you're looking for a studio. Um, why don't you come in and, um, you know, check my studio out. And I was like, I don't think I can afford you, dude. You know, because it's like everything he had the rails with the pro photos. Like it was a 20, 2,500 square foot studio. It was dope. Oh, nice. And he was just like, come talk to me. Um, so I came and talked to him and he was like, listen, this is just me in here. I share it with two makeup artists. He's like, here's the keys. You look on the calendar. If it's open, feel free to shoot as much as you want. And he's like, you know, I know you talked about prices. He's like, what do you, you know, what do you think you can do? I'm like, I don't know, maybe 200, you know, and I was only expecting to be in here maybe once, you know, or twice a month, you know, I could go maybe 200 a month. And he was like, man, I'm giving you the keys. I'll take that 200. You can shoot in here as much as you want. And really, to me, I always credit that as that's what started me with seeing light, working in the studio. Because I started going in, it was right behind the house, literally five minutes. And I would go in there. I found a friend at the time, and we shot every single month and just experimented, you know, played away. And I think that's where I saw my lighting game just really, really grow for like 2015 to 2000, all the way up into 2016, I would say 2017. I literally probably shot once a week. Okay. That's another thing people think about. People, you know, look down on it, but I'm like, especially when you're at certain levels, even no matter what level you're at, you always got to practice, right? You always got to sit there and try and create. So, but that's what really pushed me out there. I'm a firm believer that complacency kills, and if you're not challenging yourself and you're not, you know, taking chances or whatever and seeing what works for you, then you're going to kind of always be stagnant, and then creatively it will suffocate you. Like, I I totally agree. you got to constantly be practicing, which is kind of like, that was kind of our introduction of, like, how we met, because we met, in, you know, at a conference, practicing, learning, and everything, but it was, uh, somebody goes, man, we, I think it was the year... I can't remember what year Shutterfest was, but I think it was the year when they had the comp- the image competition, and yeah. everybody was like comparing each other. And somebody was somebody goes, "Man, if they if you're uh," and I just remember going, you know, I wanted to I I, I sent, submitted a few images and I was happy because I I was at that level. It, God, was that 2018 when that happened? I can't remember now. I'm drawing a blank. What year was it? It's either 2017 or 2018. But um, I just remember going, "Man, my pictures aren't as that good." you know, then when am I competing? Because I was like, man, that, that was a killer image. And at the time, I thought it was one of Sal's or Michael's pictures. And then I looked at it and I go, Brandon, and I, I just saw B Hunter. And I was like, Brandon, who's that? And then the smart said, I don't know who that is. And everybody, that, so that's why I say like, when I met you, it was kind of like a burst on the scene. Like, dude, all I know is you were the guy that came in and killed it. And you challenged everybody in the wedding category with their images. I was like, dude, where did this Brandon guy come from? We got to become friends. And I was like, just because I love, you know, you know, they always say surround yourself around people that are going to, you know, inspire you, make you better. So I was immediately was like drawn because I was like, dude, this dude is good. And it was just from that moment on, it was like, man, and then every year I've always just seen you push the envelope. And like I said, I took, I've always said you're one of my best lighting photographers in the game. So like when you say you were practicing lighting, what was it about it that just made you try? Because your lighting, I mean, for someone that isn't as, as you know, on, on the level or at the, at the extreme you know expertise in lighting and kind of like always played with it to kind of supplement you know low lights or whatever but like you got you do it at a level where it's just like oh there's there's that those levels to it where was that sparked it with lighting that made you just say uh, you're aha in it you know you know in, in all honesty i don't know if it's if it's i think the aha moment for me if i was to pick one it's kind of like what I tell people when they ask me, like, you know, I should have or stuff like that. I don't, and I, I didn't hem myself in into the different lighting patterns that we all learn, right? It's good mm-hmm. to know them, but in all honesty, it's like I tell people when I'm shooting, it's just, it's really 
I like directional. Directional things just to carve out the jawline. I like shadows. I like highlights. And what I've noticed, a lot of photographers will say, you know, they'll look at their work and they'll say, that's blown out. I'm like, it's really not. <laughs> I'm like, you can tell, you know, from your graphs, it's not blown out just because it's bright. I mean, it's, there's there's dynamic ranges. Like we say, there's ranges to everything. Mm -hmm. And I would just really play around with just one of the times I taught, I just said, it's a game of inches, right? So people get into change in there. They're all about numbers, or they ask somebody, how did you shoot that? And it's like, oh, it's F11, or 200 shutter speed or whatever. To me, none of that stuff matters. What matters to me is just how does the light look? And instead of playing around with your camera, get the exposure to a certain point, and then just move the light. Just move it an inch. And that's literally all I would do. Move it an inch closer, move it an inch backer, and just watch how the light falls on a subject. And I would just do that so much that it's it's just honestly when people ask me, well, what were your settings? I don't know. I, I know a range of where they were, but most of it is moving it back and forth. So if I'm in a studio shooting, like when I was practicing, I mean, while the while the girl they make the models getting their makeup done or whatever, I might sit there and look at a light setup and I might move it four or five times before the model's even under the light because I got so used to light direction. If I had this modifier this big, how is the light falling? What is the fall off? Um, what does the fall off look like? I, I would say probably one of my biggest influences is looking at guys like uh, Felix Klintz um, that do a lot of feathering. A lot of people do feathering with light now, but I think I caught on to that a lot early and just doing drastic angles with the light and just seeing how it shakes the face. I'm always looking at the face, I'm always looking at the eyes, I'm always looking at direction. I don't, I'm not a big flat light person. Um, that's a, uh, just a long-term way of just saying it's, it's really just moving. Just seeing what light direction. I'm usually at 90 degrees, you know, I'm not at the classic 45. Usually I'm at 90 degrees almost like a split light type of uh, uh, setup. Okay. But what I tell people is it's a split light setup if the light's right here, right? So I don't know if you can see, if the light's right here, that's more like split light because then the spill is coming over here and this side is really dark. And the best way I could say is any way I have the light, I feather it. So I'll put the light way out here. It's still 90 degrees to the face, but I'm just getting soft light off the soft box or whatever modifier you're using, even with, um, you know, the off-camera flash reflector. People look at that, oh, that's hard light. Well, if I'm outside, guess what? I'm feathering it. That thing may be pointing three feet in front of someone's face, but across, and I'm shooting with the spill off the light, which is giving me kind of a, a little bit of a hard look, but it's still soft, but it's still dimension. Okay. Uh, it's just really, I mean, it's tr it's been trial and error and no matter where I'm at, I try different things, different angles, right? So, so with um, so if a novice came in to you, and I know you know I'm kind of uh, preempting what's going to happen in St. Louis here in a couple months because we, we see it all the time. Brandon, yeah, I'm new to lighting. I want to get better at lighting. What is that? What are the first things I need to get? Because I mean, we all have, everybody uses their own systems. Some people use Pro Photo. Some people use the Westcott's. Um, I myself, I use Westcott's. Um, I have friends that use Godox or whatever. So if someone's coming to you early on, first starting out, what do you always recommend? I tell them, light is light, right? I shoot with Pro Photos. I now have a Westcott as well. Um, but I should say, shoot with whatever you can afford. Um, the main thing to me is what type of modifiers are you looking at? How do you want to shoot? What, ins what inspires you? What do you want your light to look like? I myself, I'll tell people speed lights. You know, if you're not outside in hard, you know, strong sun, I learned on speed lights. That's another thing that I think helped me with my lighting because I met who one of them is a good friend of mine now. Um, his name is Richard Quarles. They, for the first two years of me holding a camera, were just shooting speed lights and not always having like a nice big modifier that we see with the speed lights. It could, it would be bare ball, mm -hmm. but they would put it at certain angles 
and they just knew the direction. They could feel how the light was going to act coming from a certain direction with that small head. And then if they did put something on there to diffuse it, it, it was instinctual. They just knew. So when it comes to multiple light setups in the studio, I actually do fall back to learning from them because speed lights to me, you see so many people with the big soft boxes, right? Mm -hmm. the first thing they start, I actually personally think that hinders people because it's easier to shoot with a large light source and get a nice evenly lit image. You could get some, you can get directional too, but it's easier with a large umbrella or a large octa. But if you're taking that outside and you're running and gunning, that thing is a mess, <laughs> right? Yep. So to learn, if you can learn how to light with a small light source, a speed light especially, um, you know, that to me, that's the way to go. Because if you can light and people can't tell if it's a small light source or a big light source, speed lights will teach you how. But a lot of times now, I didn't have AD 200s or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's what people are using now. And those are still good because it's still a small light source, but you got to angle it a certain way. You have to know your distances, your angles to get a certain lighting effect. I, I, that's what I would say. I would say, like, don't go out there and get this large softbox because it looks cool, great light. But it, most of the time, if you don't have a studio, you're outside, and that's a disaster waiting to happen. Absolutely. Yeah, so. I agree. And it's less stuff to carry, too. I mean, I'm. You know, I'm a minimalist yeah. of the heart because I just I'm always a one man show most of the time, and you know, just to have to carry out. It's all funny games, so you have to carry it all and set it up yourself, well, and you're on a time yeah. crunch. Like, oh god. <laughs> yeah, so. and, and, it, and it's and it's I hate to say it, but it is easier until mm -hmm. you get until you get into the skills. Once you know how light acts, when you use the larger soft boxes, now you're doing some really cool stuff with it. But if you start off with it. What happens if you can't use that? What happens if you don't have that opportunity? What happens if you don't have that foot space to? How are you going to light that subject? How are you going to know how to how to use light and shape the light to get that effect that you would from a large soft large softbox with a small light source if you start with the large first? Yep. And speaking of lights, because light light is all over the world. And speaking of the world, you, my friend, have been a world traveler. With uh through photography um now if my memory serves me Craig is uh most recent was South Africa before that I believe was it Iceland you were a part of that experience uh, actually you, you, it was it was we were in Europe okay and then before that it was Iceland yeah yeah so you've been all over so I mean and that's one of the coolest things about being being a photographer and doing what we do um and talking about our journey you got the opportunity to see so many parts of the world what has been one of your favorite places to um uh, be doing photographs at i love iceland i can't lie so i've been to iceland twice um okay. it's just the landscape but probably one of my favorite places i wish i knew what i knew when i went to tokyo the first time okay um, i definitely want to go back I didn't get a chance to shoot as much because I didn't know where I could shoot or couldn't shoot. Um, but you get outside the, the city, some of those landscapes out there are just insane. And um, I just would love to be in that type of environment. Um, like I said, went to South Africa back in December. Um, I am looking to go in 2025 again because, again, sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Um, some of the places I found out about down there, we needed a little bit of a permit, and now I've got connections to go to these places. White sand dunes. I never knew there was white sand dunes in, oh, wow. in South Africa. Yeah. It, well, I'm putting it out there. Cool. If you're doing 2025, I'm going to do what I can to be on that excursion. Now that I'm sending the kid out to college, you know, me being at home isn't as, you know, greater need now that the kid's going to college. So I'm, I'm putting it out in the, in the universe that I want to be in that South Africa the next 2025 excursion with you. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, you know, I, I'm going to put it out there. I've got all types of resources from broad makeup artists to bridal boutique owners. I brought some dresses. And then, of course, I have dresses of my own uh, that I've, you know, commissioned out. Uh, I have a young lady in Texas. I think she's in Texas now. She was in L.A. But every year I get her to make two dresses and then um, I take those wherever I go. I mean, like okay, you said, so she's from my neck of the woods. Nice. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Like, her name's Tina Summers Label. You can look her up on Instagram. Okay. But any yep. dresses you've seen with me at, at Shutterfest, mm-hmm. uh, they're all her dresses. Every single and, one. And to the listeners out there and the people that are watching the video, if you go to Brandon's Instagram, and like when I say he, he gets these badass dresses that's an understatement these dresses are amazing the models that they that they put them on are make them look even more amazing and it's just like you want to talk about drama with the dress this guy is in my opinion one of the originators of making that like now I, anytime i get a bride with a long dress you know with a train and a veil it's like i just tap into tap into that inner brand in me but let me, so with your style of shooting i've always noticed that you love going those wide shots and getting all that drama what is it about that that draws it or do you consider that your style yeah i, I like that environmental portrait portraiture where it's you're getting the whole environment around whatever whether it's architecture or like iceland the landscape right but then you have this beautiful dress that's just setting it all off Right, um, and that drama with the long flowy. So a lot of stuff I do. I just did it the other day, yesterday, for an uh, engagement client. You know, she had a red dress. I asked her. I had asked her before the shoot. And I said, Hey, what what color is your dress? She said red. So I have certain pieces of fabric. Um, it was a beautiful dress, floor length, nice train. But then we got up in the art gallery and took some shots where I put. Actually, I have it right here. You know. We attached this thing over here. It's probably yep. about three yards long and attached it to the end of that dress. So now you got the train. And then just kind of having that drama of the dress just kind of coming out, that wide angle accentuates how wide or flowy that dress looks. One thing the young lady said is we just saw the um, Super Bowl show. So you saw the halftime Super Bowl show. What did Alicia yep. Keys have? That right? Oh, yes dynamic dress right and that's the first thing as soon as she came on it was like wow right she already can sing but that sucker was just i just like that wow factor and just filling that frame with that dress that's what the wide angle helps with you know zooms are nice so many people shoot tight i shoot i try to shoot the opposite it's a little bit different so when people see my stuff at the bridal show that's one of the differences they notice besides the color and the darker draw in my photos. Uh, they see, I guess. Mm-hmm. I always look at environmental portraits and I always say, those are, those are show pieces. Those are show pieces. Those are the yeah. type of pictures that like when someone, when you walk in someone's house, like we see behind you, that's a show piece. That's an artwork. You know, like I love candid images. I love getting up close and personal. I love telling a story. You know, I'm obviously I'm a wedding photographer. That's like one of my first loves. I love telling that story and creating a book with it. That's why, you know, making albums was so important to me because I love telling people's stories. But going mm-hmm. back until I had to get, you know, with the go back to my grassroots, like what is it about photography that made me love? I love those moments that are frozen in time. Like, you know, that's where my my photojournalism, you know, love comes into play. But when I look at environmental portraits, when I look at that, the wide angles, the the drama with the just all that, you know. Those pictures to me become, I view those, those are iconic. Those are those that, you know, it's going to be hard to repeat that again. You're never going to get that moment again to create something that's so dynamic that is appreciated. Like that's how I, that's why I hold environmental portraits in such high regard because there's so much challenges beyond with that, not just with getting this, nailing this amazing shot, but you're in an environment. You don't control so many things. How do you combat, you know, doing that? Like when we're like places at parks, when, like I remember that, that one morning shoot we did in uh, St. Louis, we went to that park. Everything was great, but we got lucky because we all got up early, and there wasn't a hundred other photographers there. How do you combat those type of things uh, when you're doing environment? Because that's one of the challenges I do see with environment portraits is the environment itself. Yeah, it's. I mean, we have any software nowadays too, right? But it, it's just like you said, we got up early. I mean, here in DC. I will tell my clients, I'm like, listen, if you want this, you know, dynamic shot up on Lincoln Memorial, we cannot be shooting later than 10 o'clock, mm-hmm. right? Between 8, especially during the summertime, between 8 and 10, you're going to have some people up there. But with the wide angle effect, if I'm taking a wide shot of the Lincoln Memorial and the dress is in front, one, the dress hides a lot of people behind Right, and then when we're the further we are away from a subject or a distraction like maybe a construction site with orange cones, they've become small. 
right? So it's just really easier to get those out. It becomes an issue when it's people that are up close or on the side, or like, let me sit, let, I'll say if I do a wedding party and I don't have enough room to back up far enough, like those type of portraits, they get hard because people start to get skewed on the end, right? Mm. Wide heads, long heads, you know, when I first started getting into it, I had a, a beautiful maternity shot under inside the Lincoln Memorial. I forget what the writing is, one of the constitutions or something. And they're up there under it. Shot is great, right? But I didn't pay attention to the bottom part of the frame. I made the gentleman's foot look like it was, you know, five feet long, mm -hmm. you know? To me, those are more the issues I have to w watch out for as opposed to the distractions of the people. But of course, I would not be shooting. Cherry Blossoms is coming up here. It's the first thing I'm telling people. I have a early morning shoot every single day during what we hope is going to be peak time at Cherry Blossoms. But we're, I told them we, we need to be up there at 7 o'clock. It's already going to be busy. But I can still make it work with the wide lens. I just have to angle things a certain way. Right? And that's, I guess, where you look and try and be creative with your angles. Maybe sometimes you shoot more of the environment up top and maybe not shoot the whole dress or the whole subject below, but you're, it's about the environment as much as it is about the subject, where they are, especially cherry blossoms, the beauty, right? That's what they want to see. Uh, so I just find just could be different angles, getting down, getting low, getting dirty, right? Um, how many of us, you know, and you know, as a wedding photographer, how many photographers out there say they're a wedding photographer, but you never see them move. They're shooting from the same spot all the time. Mm, yeah. Right? They're, they're shooting like a tourist would take a photo with the same camera. So you're getting the same angles the average person is getting. So, so I you're got that. You're not doing anything special. Like, I, I say it all the time. If, if you don't see me with a little bit of dirt on me on a wedding day, if, you, if I'm not sweating or anything like that, then I didn't work. You know, I, I, t yeah. I challenge myself. Like, I get low. I'm not afraid of laying on the ground. I've gotten completely drenched, which is, you know, why I don't dress nice at weddings. And I, I <laughs> guarantee my bride, I tell her every picture I give you, I'm not going to be in any of them. So don't worry about it. So I'll yeah. be laying there yeah. next to the mud. And, you know, I've been bitten by God knows how many insects and. You know, there was even one point where, you know, we live in Texas. I heard that little rattle and I said, oh, hell no, because I knew that was a snake. And I, got up, I was like, we're leaving. They're like, well, I said, there was a snake. And she's like, you sure? And then they heard the rattle. They said, yep, we're done. And I was like, yep, yeah, yeah. Welcome, to, welcome to doing your ranch engagement session. But I heard that rattle. I was like, nope, this kid don't do snakes. So yeah. <laughs> one of the few fears I have is snakes. So I was like, it's not happening. But so with 10 plus years of doing this, I got to ask, what's what's kept you motivated this long? Because, I mean, like I said, to me, I feel like we're still scratching the surface on, like, how good you are. And I feel like the industry, every time somebody comes out and they merge, you just keep get, you keep evolving and getting better. So, like, what's kept you, like, motivated and pushing yourself to, to raise the bar every year? It seems like it's more. It's, it. it's just creativity and being inspired by other people. You know, there's, there's people coming out that may not have been shooting as long, but it's, they have an eye. Right. And it's just, I, I look at, like you said, there's different levels to this thing. I look at their work and I'll be like, okay, I, I may not want to light exactly the same, but how can I get, I, I want people to look at my stuff and say, wow, too. So if I see someone doing certain things at a certain level, I'm like, okay, you know, I need to step up. You know, like, so we got to keep fresh. So mm -hmm. I look, it could be a double-edged sword now, right? So sometimes it can make us like sit back like, dang, right? What am I doing, right? But a lot, I just look at it and it's just like, listen, I know it's a train, it's a, it's like training us, right? I gotta be out there shooting to get better. And as we're shooting and I'm looking at different inspiration, I look at a lot of um, Malaysian photographers, Akidas, Johnson Wee. I look at their stuff and you want to talk about fantastic storytelling using wide angle and incorporating the whole environment, you know, I'll go, like I went to see them in LA, you know, so if I see guys like that coming somewhere, it doesn't matter how good we get, you can always learn from somebody else. You can learn from somebody else that you consider way better than you. I can learn from somebody else that, not that I think I'm better than them, but they be maybe newer in the field. But guess what? Sometimes people are newer and they may know something you never thought of. 
or just don't get stuck in your ways of doing things a certain way. And that's how you get stale. Like sometimes it's like, oh, wow, you know what? New technology comes out. Uh, like one thing I just, this summer, I've never did the double exposure in camera. I've seen it. I've seen the Michael Anthony's do it. I just never really pressed it. And a gentleman was showing me how he shoots and he had just, he's a newer wedding photographer. Uh, and he's in Aruba named Damien. And he was showing me these double exposure photos. And I was like, how did you do that? And it's technology in the camera, but because I've been shooting it stuck on certain settings or whatever, I just never thought about it. And he's like, oh man, go here and shoot this. And you, again, I can't do it like he does, but now I'm practicing. Now, if I'm out with some couples, I'll do what I do. And then I'll take a risk if I have time towards the end and just keep working at things working at different things and not trying to stay the same and just looking at what might, you know, what might be a trend. And like I said, I like fabric, I like flowy stuff. So what might be a trend? I might add something to it. I have a client coming up, um, they're a dance studio. So dance studios are used to fabrics and stuff, but they love my outdoor portraits. So they're bringing their dance teams to certain parts around DC with me on a Sunday morning for four hours. And guess what I'm doing? I'm bringing my whole case of fabrics and shooting around some of the stuff I may shoot my engagement couples. There's nothing wrong with bringing something different and shooting a different genre. Um, you know, so I just think of how can what I like to do add to something else I'm seeing be done. I am not a dance photographer, but now I'm going to take, I could do this with dresses. Let me do this with dance, you know? So nice. it's I just... Love it's just always fine trying to find, you know, a different way. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't always work. Like I'll be honest, you know, I'll be like, okay, if I'm going to Shutterfest, what can I bring different to the table, right? You know, and sometimes people are like, listen, dude, your lighting is different for everybody else, you know. So I may try and incorporate a different way to show lighting. Like this year, I'm calling. I'm calling it See the Light, Be the Light, I think is what it's called. Mm -hmm. And literally, I want to have the idea is to have shooting stations. It's going to be hands-on. But I want to split people up into groups and have one person control the key light, what do we call them, valves, voice-activated um, light stands. Mm -hmm. We'll have a light stand. But I want people to actually be the light stand, standing there by the light stand, looking at how, what is that light doing, right? Because that's how I... I don't care about um, numbers so much. It's what is that um, soft box or what is that strip box doing? So I want the idea is to have the people actually rotate between at one station, have three different light settings, your main light, your fill, and maybe an edge light, right? And have one person sit there, come up and shoot, and have three other people standing at one of the stations and I want them to move the light and then tell me what they see. I want them to, here's how I would shoot it. Now tell me what your flavor is. Let's see you step up, have them move the light, and let's see how it reacts different from where I had it. But then I want the people who are actually moving the lights to pay attention to how is that light hitting? Where is that light positioned? And what is it producing? Then I want them to rotate so they can experience at each part, you know, edge, fill, key light and shoot right that's the idea is in my head something different so people can see how a uh, more feel organically how is this light working as opposed to focusing so much on like numbers and settings no i, I so, love that idea it's like it, it's taking away the oh let me show you cool lighting shit instead of like you know sorry to say like that you know everybody wants to learn all the cool lighting shit and this and that but so almost going back, let's strip down and get back. The, let's build the foundation back because we see it all the time where people will buy. You know, I use Magmod example. When Magmod came out, see everybody was buying everything with Magmod. If it had Magmod attached to it, they were buying it, putting it. In. But I said, do you even know what any of this stuff does? And they're like, no, I just know I need it. Well, what do you need it for? What do you, you know, they're doing. They're putting up two modifiers that literally cancel each other out. You know, which for the life <laughs> of me, I've got, like a light sphere, it takes the light and it shoots it all in all directions, spreads the light. But then I turn around and see them take the same light sphere and then put a grid on it, which what is a grid doing? It goes down the line. So I'm like, you canceling each other when you do that. Do you, you do realize that? And I would say that all the time. But just, I mean, I love the idea. Like, you know, people are like, I need to buy a strip box. Do you know what a strip box does? No, but I just, I saw so-and-so using it. 
or you know they use it in their anyway. YouTube video, and now yeah, I think I need to get it. And I was like, but okay, are you in the field or are you in the studio? Oh, I'm in the field a lot. Okay, do you know how heavy a sphere or a, not a, not a sphere, but a, um a, a a light grid or um oh, I'm losing the, strip saying the wrong word. Strip box, thank you. Strip box, yeah. Oh, you know how heavy a strip box is? Do you know how heavy it'd be like? I need to get a beauty dish. Okay, what size beauty dish? I think I want to get the thirty six. I want to go big. Get a thirty six inch. Okay, great. Do you know how heavy those things are? Do you know how to set one up really fast? Do you know how to carry that solo and do it? Like you think you need to think about all these things when you don't have everybody there to help you. You know, yeah. having a beauty dish is great, but if you don't have the right type of stand for it, you have to get a heavier stand because they require different type style stands and just all these different things. But I like how it's stripping all that out the way and saying, hey, let me get back to the basics of what lighting is going to do, what I have, and then how to maximize that and then make sure I'm buying the right things because we don't want to turn around and buy a bunch of things that we ended up not using. That's always a waste of money and it's frustrating at the same time. Right, right. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's just, it's just really, like you said, simplifying it and just slowing mm -hmm. down. Stop looking at what everybody else is telling you. Understand what the light is doing and develop an eye for what looks good and what are you trying to accomplish. Okay. The last thing I want to hit up um, before, because I, I know you're uh, very limited on your time, and so I do appreciate your time, is the one thing I always thought was unique. Um, we had this debate years ago about the photography industry being a very extroverted industry full of introverts. And I feel like you, uh, knowing you over the years, I've always said you're someone that I felt has always mastered that. Like I myself, I view myself, I'm viewed as an extrovert, but I tell people if you really knew me, I'm actually an introvert because I like to, I'm a creature of habit. I like to be around people that I'm comfortable with, but because I had to be in an environment very public for the majority of my adult life, the careers I've had, being in the military, all those things, I was forced to be very public. So I had to learn how to thrive in it. But in reality, I'm the guy that wants to sit at the table with his six friends, have a drink and just have great talks and everything. And I could care less about everything around us. But how have you been able to maneuver in a world, um, you know, being, being as introverted as you are in an extroverted world? It's not easy, but it's, I think over the years, I've forced myself, you, you really got to force yourself out of the comfort zone, or you're never going to change, right? So Shutterfest was one thing that helped, uh, I, the main thing that helped, but, you know, also, you know, my career as an HR, you know, once I got into being an HR director, the whole thing that helps bring me out of being that guy in the corner, not really saying much, is knowing or feeling that you know people can learn something from me right and, but i'm also humble at the same time like i can learn from you too but to know if i can help somebody and speak to somebody and they can get whether it's the littlest thing but they can get something out of learning or listening or watching me that's kind of helped me kind of open up more and more and more over the years and so that's where shutterfest comes in I mean, every year I get super nervous. I mean, I'm, I, I'm nervous now. I'm like, dang, we got 43 days for this thing to come up. But it's like once you, I, I know once we're there, you know what you know. You know, just be yourself, right? So that's what I tell myself. Just be myself, and it is what it is. Don't worry so much of whether people are going to like me or not. Just be genuine. And my main thing is I want people to understand, you know, if you really, really like my work, this is not something that I wake up and snap my fingers and it's just awesome. No, I work at it. I've, I've had my mistakes, still have my mistakes. It's not always going to be 100% uh, perfect when you're out on a job. But to know, know what you're doing, know your stuff, it allows you to pivot and change and still get something good. So, and just speaking to people, I like, I want people to feel comfortable, right? And just, understand hey we are all the same and i speak from the heart being genuine oh, yeah. what i know and if they can as i've seen over the years i mean i've had people encourage me more and more and you know they come up to me and they tell me they like seeing the, the realness um the biggest example i think two years ago i tried to do a five light setup for one of my classes i could not get to the five lights because of the environment i was in but what people loved about it is they can see that things don't No, I don't just walk up into an area and puff the magic dragon. It's, it's just like that. No, 
you you have to understand what you're working with and know when to you know know when to pivot. And when people came up to me, they said that was one of their favorite classes because they got to see just genuinely how to work through and resolve a situation, right? And that stuff doesn't always work. But the photos that I showed them and that they wound up getting were still, you know, I, you know, I'm not a big head, but they were still great. They were still awesome. Right. But it's like, yeah, but you see how I work through it. We're, we're all human beings. And I have to, you know, I think over the years, it's just be yourself and people will come. Right. People will understand. People will gravitate to you. And I want people to be themselves too around me. You know, there's something special about all of us, as opposed to saying there's nothing special about any of us. There's something yeah. special about all of us. So it, it just, you know, I. I can't help if I'm sitting in a corner. That's the long yeah. way to get to that point. <laughs> yeah, it's so. true. And and it's funny. Is what's what crazy? What what what's uh, good and bad about it is, I mean, when you're sitting in the corner, you have guys like me who are your maniacal friends who make you get out that corner because I am who I am, <laughs> and I like to start yeah. I like to start trouble and everything. Like I just remember one girl going, oh my God, that's Brandon Hunter. And I was like, you want to meet him? She's like, oh no, I, I, I you know, I'm still, she's, it was our first Shutterfest. And she's like, oh no, I'm still, I'm like over, you know, she's like, oh, this is too much for me. And I was like, trust me, he's just as nervous. And then she's like, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. And I go, okay. And I was like, Brandon, I yelled your name out. And I was like, hey, this is Sheena, she wants to meet you. And she was like, looked at me and I was like, yeah, by the way, I'm Marvin. I am the troublemaker of the group. Like, but again, that's just my, it's my way of how I deal with, you know, whenever I get nervous is I just, okay, you know what? I just go into fun mode. I can't, mm -hmm. if, if I'm nervous and I'm uncomfortable, it's hard to be nervous and uncomfortable when I'm smiling. Well, what's gonna make me smile? Making people around me, you know, happy in a way or something like that. And then making new connections and then being a part of that. Cause I was there, I used to be that person where it's like, oh, that's so-and-so. And then just would look the other way. Cause I'd be so scared to walk up to them. I felt like I didn't earn it yet. I mean, you know, I'm not at that level to go shake this person's hand. I'm, I'm still a new photographer, still trying to learn it. Like, like I said, mm -hmm. I, I became better off camera flash working with you and Clay and just getting, getting out of my own way and stop making excuses. And, you know, it was like, oh, you, first it was, I don't have the money to buy the gear. Well, I did have the money to buy the gear. I just didn't buy it. Then I didn't know what to buy. Then it was, I don't know what to do. I see these people doing it. And then I see their work getting better. And I was like, well, like you said earlier, when you do the same thing over and over, you can't expect to evolve and get better if you're doing the same thing. I had to crouch. I had to change the angles. I had to change the way I did things. And then it became fun because then I had a new creative, uh, a new creative challenge, which to me, that's what gets me through the days is how can I challenge myself creatively? How can I just keep getting better? I'm very blessed to live in Texas where we have these amazing skylines that are natural. Most of my skies mm -hmm. are not replaced, which I'm very grateful for. And I joke, I said, you know, these are Texas skies. These isn't AI. This is all Texas right here. So I, I love that and everything. But um, in, in, in closing up, I want to talk about um, inspiration and motivation and everything one more time. Who has been your inspirations and your motivation? Who who are those photographers that have kind of cultivated what has made you who you are? Uh, I mean, I, I will go back, like you know, to Kidas, um, and it may, specifically him, Johnson Lee is very good. But a lot of those Malaysian photographers, their style is, you know is where I'm at now. Shutterfest, a lot of like the Sells, the Michael Anthony's, the CJ, a lot of those guys, right? Um, that's what got me to where I am coming to Shutterfest and seeing how people are doing stuff in areas outside of DC, right? DC was, is, and I've had a photographer come up here and say, I don't know how you do it because everyone's a natural life photographer. There's some people that stroll, but not like me. But where did I go to see that? That was my first step of inspiration. Now I've evolved to like the key dies and seeing like a lot of these Asian style photographies, just the just the way they see things and how they tell the story. So I'm constantly looking at um, a lot of their stuff. Um, Clay Cook, I would say, was one in between, you know, before I even really got to uh, show Fest. Clay Cook, Felix Coons, the way they do a lot of their um, uh, like branding photos, so it's almost like a mix. Like that's kind of where I'm at now. It's kind of mixing that type of lighting, but more with like the dramatic, the environmental stuff that I'd love to uh, learn from. Seeing the Shutterfest, the Michael Anthes, the Sal's, and then now Johnson Wee. So it's like kind of all that three is evolving into each other with the Kidas. And the biggest thing I take away I took from Kidas when I went to see him, we were walking through a parking lot. 
And in that parking lot, it's like, you know, it had the stone concrete. I think it was in Pasadena. It had the stone concrete benches, and there was this big bust, right? But it was nothing but power lines, um, cars, and parking space. And he stopped. And we're like, okay, the bust is cool, but how? I, I couldn't see it. And I was like, okay, when is it? How is he going to get this shot? Next thing I know, he crouches down and goes underneath the bench. Now, this is why I went to see the man, right? Because I wanted to see him in action. And he gets under the bench. He puts the camera under the bench. He uses the bottom of the concrete bench as a geometrical frame, right? Then it's like the angle he shot at, it's the bust, it's the face of the bust. And then they've got the model who's the bride, you know, beautiful pose. And all it is is bright blue sky. Now, he shot this, edited on his phone, didn't remove anything. And that picture was wall worthy. And it was like, I don't understand how he saw that. I mean, but that's why I went to see, because it's like we're walking through a parking lot. 99% of the people would never have thought, oh, let me get down under this bench, use the sidewalk and the bench to frame the photo. And his angle is so low, you don't see the cars, but it's not too high where you see the power line. And it looks like the bust is looking at the bride and the way she's got he's got her pose is a dramatic pose so everything from the bust eyesight through to the bride is leading you through the frame and i'm like he did that in a matter of five minutes like he saw it got down got to his correct angle shot it got it up did a quick little edit on his cell phone boom that's that's the creativity that like i want to see what i don't see what the normal person doesn't see. Um, and then there's another gentleman, uh, Cor- was it Cordonia? Um, I can't remember his first name, but he does these shots where it's wide shots. He shoots with like a plant or something in the foreground. He puts a gel on the plant so it's nice and red. He puts another light, whatever type of strobe, on a couple. And his power level is high enough that every or the ambient goes black. But the plants in front of you are making nice shapes and they're all red. And then the couple is perfectly lit. But they're small in the frame. But the plants or whatever he's shooting through is framing them. I did that on, I tried to do it on one wedding. I got a decent shot. But not, I think it's Felix Cordonia. But it's not. <laughs> It just doesn't feel so now that's my next challenge going back to what I was talking about earlier like man I'd like to get good at that and then once I do that what is my spin on it how am I going to put a spin on it how am I going to make it different but this is the inspiration so he's another one that I think of um, and in the last one that I did we shot through this little grate with all circles and I hit it with a green gel and lit them on the other side but again Knowing what light source you have, knowing what modifier you have, I could not get it evenly lit across the grid the way he does. Where I needed something with more power, right, and a, and a little bit uh, bigger modifier to spread the light across the grid that was in front of me. The couple was lit perfectly, but I couldn't get that color the way he did it. Uh, but, you know, I will continue to, to try it. Like I said, that was on a wedding day. I got my safe pictures and stuff I know I could do. And I was like, oh, I saw this over here. And I've seen him shoot like this. Let me try this to give them something different. So. I love it. I love it. And it, that's just pumping me up like this week. I got a couple of shoots. I'm like, man, I want to I want to try double exposure. I want to try some more lighting stuff. I want to throw gels out there. Like, you know, you got my juices flowing. So I'm, I'm excited for this weekend. Man, I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much for thank this you. conversation. I know we're going to have you back on because I could talk lighting with you all day. Like, that's just so many fun things that we could talk about. Talk about traveling and lighting and just more excursions. And I, I can't wait to see you in St. Louis, man. So thank you so much. Um, where can they find you at on social media? Uh, so on IG, it's HunterScottImagery.com. Well, not .com, but it's Hunter Scott Imagery. Um, you know, my website is HunterScottImagery.com. And then Facebook is Brandon S. Hunter or Hunter Sky Energy. Okay. Very are simple. You, are we on TikTok yet? Are you doing the dances? I, I'm not. I am doing <laughs> the dances. <laughs> I've done a couple reels up. I've done a couple reels up, and I haven't done the dances. But all my stuff across the board is, is my, is my uh, business name. It's Hunter Sky Imagery. So 
I'll see you very easy to do that. All right. Well, Brandon, man, thank you so much for your time, man. And again, I can't wait to see you in a, a few weeks. And uh, yeah, looking forward to everything. And best of luck on the uh, the new wedding show uh, that you just did and everything. I know you probably walked away with a ton of uh, new weddings that are going to come down the pipeline. I can't wait to see what you put out there next. All right. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, man. Right. That's it for this week's show. Again, thanks for tuning in. Remember to like, subscribe, and share with others. Leave those reviews and check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Till then, see you next week.